Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I'm finally back from my vacation in Northern California and back to playing Kerbal Space Program. I think I might be getting a bit rusty, so let's try building a rocket, which, well, by all rights, this thing will not fly in the basic game. But thankfully, I'm using mods. Specifically, I am using Eyaldabuths. I don't know how to pronounce that silly forum name. This is the modular fuel system, the advanced modular fuel system, which adds a bunch of interesting things. So I can click on the tank and I can remove fuel from the tank. It'll tell me how much liquid fuel will fit and I can cut that in half or I can say set it to zero if I want to have a rocket that weighs slightly less, right? That's not very interesting. But what I can do here is if I click on this, uh, the atomic rocket has been updated in this mod to actually use liquid hydrogen. So you now have a generator which you can activate and shut down and everything else. While it's running, it'll use nuclear fuel. So if I remove all my tanks, I can sell it to fill it with 100% liquid H2. Similarly here, 100% liquid H2. And what we should also do is add, if we come back here, I've got Kerbal Engineer in this last tab here. We can stick this on the side. And uh, you can see this whole thing weighs about six tons, which is actually kind of low for something of this size. And the reason is these are using realistic fuels and liquid hydrogen is actually a very low density fuel. So if I throttle this thing up and the engine will activate the engine, uh, I'm just about able to lift off and no more with this mass. Normally this thing would just sit on the launch pad irradiating it until you know, time ran out basically. But this thing is actually able to lift its own weight because of the ultra low density of liquid hydrogen. And, you know, that's one of the things you have to consider when you're building a rocket. If you're using liquid hydrogen, you're going to get the best performance for your engines, but your, en your fuel tanks are going to be absolutely massive to carry all that liquid hydrogen. Remember the space shuttle? That big external tank, that was just full of liquid hydrogen. You see also that this is burning down relatively quickly, even though you know normally this would take a lot longer to burn down on it. The specific impulse as well for the nuclear rocket is higher than it would normally be in the base game. And that's just a realism thing. But let's let's actually go back to the space center and we'll actually show you the differences. What they've added is a couple of different new fuel types. So if I throw this away, we can just build ourselves a very, 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 very simple rocket. And we'll just use a single fuel tank and an LV-909. So if I look at the action groups now, I can click on this. Oh, actually, let's put the Kerbal Engineer on the side as well just so it'll tell us numbers. And you'd see right away, it tells us the mass is four tons, has a delta V of 4,006 meters per second. Now, if I click on this, I have three, I have two options. I can take this liquid fuel and oxidizer engine and convert it to run on liquid fuel and liquid oxygen. Unfortunately, that means that it's unable to use f fuel from this tank, so I get zero delta V, but that's fine. R click on here, switch it over. And now you see values have changed. The stage is actually less massive than it was before. And I get slightly less delta V by this calculation. But if I go back to this, you'll see that the engine maximum power actually goes up. See the liquid fuel and oxidizer configuration? Uh, it's 10% lower than the liquid fuel and liquid oxygen, right? So, you know, you're, this is a trade-off. You're getting higher thrust in return for uh, slightly less delta V, but the stage actually masses less. So actually it works out better when you you have everything being 100% when you have the same fuel mass and that's harder to do because the, the tanks are fixed in size. Anyway, the other option is liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen and you'll notice that the specific impulse, the ISP at sea level and vacuum is the highest of all of these here. But because liquid hydrogen is so big, you're not going to fit nearly as much fuel in this tank. Also, the engine max power is lower. But if we switch this out, remove, do it, you'll see, yeah, you get, you know, half as much fuel. But the stage is even lighter. And we all know that weight is a huge, imp hugely important thing when you're building spacecraft, right? So one of the thing, another thing to know about this is if we launch this, we're using liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. We're going to just set this on the pad and I'll right click on it and I'll accelerate time. Uh, oh, we will accelerate time, yes, not physical time acceleration because that would take an eternity. There we go, day, night, 
day, night. Uh, wait, getting it all back to front. But look, the liquid hydrogen is now evaporating on me. And the reason is that liquid hydrogen has to be kept at a very low temperature. So if you just leave it sitting around and not replenishing it, it'll just evaporate. And this is liquid hydrogen is not something that is called a storable propellant, right? And liquid oxygen is also vibrating, uh, not vibrating, it's evaporating. But uh, liquid oxygen has a higher boiling point than liquid hydrogen, so it boils off at a slightly slower rate. Regardless, these fuels, you know, you need because they're cryogenic, you need to consider this stuff. So actually, let's just fly this thing. Does it actually fly? We're back to feeling the force of gravity, and it does fly. Yay! Okay. Let's try and bring it down somewhere quickly. Because, you know, it's always fun to practice those old skills. Uh, 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 just touch it down with the greatest of ease. Okay. There. Okay, well, that wasn't a terrible landing. Anyway, so why do you have these different fuel types? Well, the reason is you have these different fuel types because in real life you have these different fuel types. If you've seen my what you know, WTF is rocket fuel video, um, then you'll know that there's a whole lot of different uh, things to consider. So I've built myself a rocket that uses all three classes of fuels for this we go into the action groups you can see the first stage here is using liquid fuel and liquid oxygen it uh, gives me a slightly higher engine max power this is the vectoring rocket we've filled this up with liquid oxygen and liquid fuel the next stage is using liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen and of course we've got the LV909 in there using that and the final stage is just standard liquid fuel and oxidizer now by liquid fuel, we're presuming they're continuing to use RP-1 because, you know, that's what's being used in this stage. RP-1 is basically a fancy type of kerosene, which is, uh, has, it's had a lot of sulfur and other contaminants removed. It has a lot of more compact, you know, hydrogen, compact you know, branching carbon chains instead of long, thin carbon chains. Apparently this makes it flow better and stops it gunking up, which is a, an important thing to consider when you've got a rocket trying to pump tons of this stuff through the system. So yeah, I've set this up in a configuration that's very similar to that what's used in the Saturn Vs. The first stage, you know, is we want fuel density, but we want efficiency, we want extra thrust. So we're using liquid fuel and liquid oxygen. Uh, we can use that because it's going to be sitting on a, the on the launch pad, and before it launches, we'll be able to keep topping up the fuel tanks and making sure that we're not launching with fuel that has evaporated. Right. The second stage is going to use liquid hydrogen because it's lighter, and therefore lifting that up is is we get an advantage by lifting less mass. So we'll be able to take advantage, and, and although this thing looks like it should never fly, again, you know, this is a lot lighter than the rest of the system, and, than it normally is. So this is actually capable of just under 1G, so if I get this launch trajectory just right, I should be able to get myself up into orbit using this. And the final stage is, of course, liquid fuel and oxidizer. Now, oxidizer is unnamed, we can guess that it's probably... Um, dinitrogen tetroxide which uh, is, which is liquid at room temperature and does not evaporate at room temperature it's basically uh, two nitrogens with four oxygens attached and that oxidizes with the uh, you know whatever you throw at it basically it's very nasty stuff to have around and in fact you know during one of the Apollo missions I forget which one at this particular time they had um, Oh, it was during the it was during the Apollo Soyuz mission. They had the the spacecraft vented its UDMH and its fuel supply, and that caught it was sucked back into the spacecraft when they opened the snorkel, and the the crew actually got very sick from inhaling this stuff, but uh, they all survived. It's just you know nasty stuff to be around. Uh, it'll you know, dissolve into everything. If you look, remember the proton launch that crashed? That uses a, high, a, a mixture of UDMH and 
Oh, it uses a mixture of dinitrogen tetroxide and UDMH. UDMH being something called unsymmetric dimethyl hydrazine, which is a pretty awesome fuel to have around. Typically, the liquid fuel used in, in storable propellants is something something hydrazine. There's hydrazine, monomethyl hydrazine, and unsymmetric dimethyl hydrazine. And all of these are great because when you mix them with um, dinitrogen tetroxide, it doesn't even need a spark plug. It just spontaneously combusts and generates huge amount of energy. That's uh, what's called hypergolic. And I'm not sure how we're doing. I don't have Kerbal Engineer here, so I'm going to have to switch to the map and see how I'm doing. Notice also I've been experimenting with the new Keithane mod. 52 seconds. We are doing pretty good. So I, uh, I'm just going to continue at this. Unfortunately, it's telling me about the resource info, so you can't see unless I do that. 65 kilometers. Yeah, this is good. I'm just going to keep burning like this. This should work just fine for me. Notice the acceleration is just under 1G here, which would not normally be the case. And it, again, it all comes down to hydrogen and how magnificently low density it is. Uh, or how inconveniently low density it is. You know, hydrogen and oxygen are the cleanest fuel mixtures for spacecraft, but they're just very annoying to handle because they evaporate, they're very cold, you need lots of insulation, and that is a penalty that is pay you only pay if you, you know, deal with the off with the well, you, you know, it's a penalty. You have to compromise for it. Um, most intercontinental ballistic missiles that used liquid fuel, things like the proton derived or whatever, they would use uh, UDMH and and they would use. They would use basically storable propellants. The nice thing about storable propellants is they're storable. They do not evaporate over time, and so you don't have to worry about your rocket needing refueled just as you're about to launch it. More importantly, you don't need to worry about your fuel evaporating in your lander after it's been sitting in state base, floating around for months on its way to its target. This is actually doing. This is actually going to be a pretty nice launch here. I think I might just keep it a little high just so I can avoid falling back to Earth just too soon. This is Serum Kerman. Of course, we're still getting we're still getting these guys at random, but when the new version comes out, you will be able to pick your Kerbals using the crew management system. And I think I'm just going to keep myself, my nose a little high here. I don't want to fall back. Wasting fuel just a little. I didn't quite get that trajectory right. Um, Normally, you want to be firing always along the velocity vector. If you're not firing along the velocity vector, you are wasting fuel because you are you are trying to turn the spacecraft to offset an earlier mistake. And oh, there we go. Let's just get myself into orbit here. Oh yes, of course. Fine controls. Give me the power of the fine controls that I may control this thing into orbit. This is actually a really nice launch. I'm going to get myself just into it, just above the atmosphere. Oh, there we go. 73, 78, there we go. Not bad, considering I was flying this. And this, of course, if I ex time accelerate, it's not going to evaporate because liquid fuel and liquid oxidizer are storable. So there we have it. This is the... The modular fuel system, the advanced system, uh, it doesn't support every single mod because it has to recalculate values for all these different engines. It supports B9, it supports KW rocketry, and I think it might support Nova Punch, but point is make sure it's compatible uh, if you're into this, or you can just avoid it completely because it does make the game a whole lot more complicated and harder. But that may be your thing. Anyway, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.